Good morning, beloved. Okay, so today is a Q and A. I told you to message me questions. No one has messaged me questions. No, it's I don't know if it's a good sign. But then next time you message me one on one and you want this, and I'm not entertaining your questions. Okay, so I I got so uh, okay. So I I got two questions, but not many. Or maybe I put it in the night and you didn't see. So even now. you have the choice i mean you have the freedom to send the messages so send them to hebron's phone or send them to my phone it's right in front of me and i will look at the the questions and uh, answer them okay so i thought today because the questions were less i wanted to do a quick uh, review of everything that we are doing for the beginning of the year um so remember the word <coughs> that has come and i thought i'll do a brief revision of that So the beginning of the year, the Lord took me to a vineyard, and uh, I told you I was looking for a vision. He didn't give it to me through a dream this year, but He showed me a vineyard. And for the newcomers, I'm just going to share a bit about what is different about a wine versus other fruits. The wine is not a creeper; it's a how many remember? Climber. We are going to have now exams to see how much you remember also. it's the wine the grape wine is not a creeper it's a climber that means anywhere you put it is just going to climb up okay creepers can even crawl but this particular wine it climbs up that's why you have a stick and you sort of a facilitate a good climbing for that and when i went to this vineyard i saw that this particular plant needs a gardener that means the crop or the fruit comes best when it has a gardener whereas other fruits like you know apple trees or mango they can still grow in the wild and you don't really need somebody overlooking them so much like they can grow like you can go to a wild banana plantation and you see a banana tree and you can eat or how many have in their buildings those sita uh, not sita fall jack fruit trees and they didn't really need any pruning or anything this tree you planted the seed of the jack fruit it grew or the mango and you go and take it but see wine you need a gardener and it's almost like if there is correct pruning of the wine that means clipping then it produces lot of grapes if there is no clipping you will go to a vineyard or you'll go to a wine and you'll see a lot of foliage foliage means just leaves but very little grape and if you go to wild grapes in the wild uh, vineyard like just random wild in grapes that are growing in the wild they can even be sour they may not meet the best so and every wine is clipped very differently from the other wine that means one got cut and cut and it's the way it's cut depends like if it's cut well the fruit that comes next year third year even 6 and 7 years will depend on the cutting and the pruning that was done maybe in the first year okay that's why the pruning is so important so the lord was showing me this and imagine jesus says in john 15 what does he say I am the wine you are the branches and who is the gardener my father is the gardener that means father is coming to prune and how many hate pruning you don't want things to be cut and sometimes you think pruning is going to be hard and painful do you know that pruning happened at Hinal's testimony Hinal was missing this is what i want to say pruning doesn't look like harsh sometimes it looks like in areas that they seem so insignificant and it's the chalega the chalega you know you've been doing things and you don't see it they're insignificant what was the land where lot went to remember last week we talked about ishmael we talked about abraham and lot and lot chose when the judgment was coming on sodom and gomorra when the angel goes and says go climb up on the mountain go there and lot is like no i don't want to go there i want to go to the small little place zoer and what is zoer called insignificant insignificant and so he is choosing insignificance that means sometimes your ishmaels in your life or the the dead branches look insignificant like she's not there on sundays what is it i'll hear it on youtube and so that's why you need the body to bring in where you don't see it somebody else can see it for you why is because imagine this the word is the greatest investment you'll ever make not money the word in your life for 20 whatever years that i've been in the lord i never forsook the word because i know when the trials come i will sleep because the word will get me through that means in the storm you're above the storm 
soaring like an eagle above the storm from third heaven. So it's not touching you. So we saw her missing for a couple of Sundays. And so everything is about commitment. Like commitment means grounded. Have you ever seed, seen a seed that is not planted? It's not going to grow. If you really want it to bear a lot of fruit, you know what a bonsai is? Stunted growth. You put it in a pot, you don't allow it. It just has fruits, but cho too. A true seed, put it in the ground. After some time, you'll remove it, you'll put it in the field. It needs to be rooted. And that water come, and then it's going to, Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like a seed. Small, you put it, and then it grows, and then it doesn't just stay there bearing fruit. Others come and are happy and take shelter in that fruit. That means you were meant to be a life giver. So we saw her not coming. And so not coming again. And so we had a tech meeting, getting into alignment. And so I saw her again off on Insta and I said, messaged, you need to take dominion. I said, when you got the job, was it told Saturday, Sunday? No. How are they taking your Saturdays and Sundays? No one can walk all over you. You are a son of God. Unless you have said, please walk all over me. No one. Not your husband, not your wife, not your relative, not your boss. is because the son chose to shut up. And deep down it's a fear of death. What if I speak up and this goes? Have no fear of death. If the father gave it to you, then the father keeps it. And always honor the father's word. That means stand up for the truth. So she spoke up. Did she lose her job? But she brought order for everybody else. So she goes up. I said, you're going to miss this year is about pruning. You need to take that ground. Because the most important thing for you right now is the word. And guess when that comes? On a Sunday, she's not there. The word is gone. Way before the devil can bring all unevenness in your life, he needs to steal the word from you. What does it say about the word that falls on the ground? The one that fell on the wayside, then the one that came and the distractions of the world, the deceitfulness of riches. It takes the word. That means what is his job? To remove the word. So what happens if the word is not there? No fruit. 30, 60, 100. There's no fruit. The seed is only not there. Where will the fruit come from? So guard the word. That means on this day, I'm not going to allow anyone to take that word away. And most times it comes through busyness. They're very logical things. Like, yeah, it is a project, it's a client. I don't care. I'm sorry, this is not what is coming. It's just she stood up now unto the Lord. And do you know that maybe now this order has come to her and now she will bring order to others also that because of her, others will stand up. So sometimes the very things that come against you, you think are for you. No, but you're there to bring order for others around you. That's what a savior does. He brings order for those around you. But now, there was no fear of death. She gave ultimatum, if you don't do this, I'm walking out. When it's of the father, it stays. And now she has it her way and she's here. But she had to take that counsel. Imagine if she did not step on it. The counsel came, counsel came. I said, this is not my counsel, PP's counsel. I said, can you see how order came into her life? But for how many months you were not there on Sundays? For the longest time when you took the job. I have known when something is of the Lord, he'll never say, forget the word. The word is who he is. Why will he give you something and now you don't have time only for the Lord? No, you have to be discerning in these things. You choose to say no to busyness. Otherwise, business will walk all over you. That's why, how did this thing happen? One Sunday, when work came, maybe to make him happy, maybe to make others happy, I don't know. She said yes. You have to be very careful. Sometimes don't get emotionally blackmailed. Some, uh, and when I say emotionally blackmailed, maybe wrong choice of words. Don't get sucked in through emotions of a person. The devil works in emotions. That means by flesh we choose. Say someone comes on Saturday night, has an emergency and they tell you, can you fill up my slot in the morning? It's genuine case. A lot of times I've actually said no to them. But it's an emergency. And I make some immediate help. I said, I can't, but I'll make somebody else do it. Or get some immediate help. Now, it came masked with emotions. Maybe the person is crying also. But I know that my presence on the word is more important. And I cannot get sucked in this. And I don't let it go. But I make sure that it's not me filling in this. I'll get somebody else to do it. 
but be discerning because the devil works in emotions that means the beggar coming at your door is crying you give money one is just standing not crying we don't feel like giving don't get sucked by emotions you everything about a son is inside out that means we give because we are led not because of the photos we see or it looks very you know charitable things and so the more the photos i'm no 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 decision i choose not to make through photos or anything like that i'll just see if i'm feeling led inside out and sometimes they just don't look anything on the outside no photos nothing but i feel like i'm supposed to give you and we want to stand with them so sonship is all about inside out okay so one of the things that i told you this year is allow the father to counsel you to prune you and sometimes that pruning is coming through the body around you and if you take that now did her life look like it's such a insignificant thing doesn't it look insignificant couple of sundays missed here and there but see because she misses couple of sundays we can't do anything with her we can't see the fruit fullness coming out of her because we can't plant her over anything oversee anything you are understanding what i'm saying everything about your life as a son we are meant to be life givers life giver is what adam first adam is a living soul the bible says the second adam the last adam is a life giving spirit so if you don't come into your alignment you'll realize everything about your life is a bit stuck not moving is because you are meant to go and give life to somebody else i was talking about this last week he who refreshes others jesus is constantly going and refreshing others is refreshed himself when he was with the lady at the samaritan woman at the well it says he was tired he sat after that he refreshes hers he is all pumped up and he is going he who refreshes others is refreshed himself that means your identity is to be a lion if you take on the position of a mouse of a meerkat you've seen lion kings lion king movie how many have not watched it please go watch watch narnia watch lion king watch matrix these are all from the bible no harry potter you can watch it if you watch it no you're a son watching harry potter these three so lion king is what simba goes and hanging out with the meerkat with that warthog that boar or whatever and then he forgets who he is and the whole jungle is in disorder why because simba is not there only taking taking charge and then it needed another simba like looking like where that what's her name no that girl nala nala comes because she is another lion lioness and she goes and looks at him and for the first time he is meeting one of his kind because they both look like each other and then she tells him what are you doing here you are meant to be king of the jungle and the whole jungle is in disorder because you have forgotten who you are and the minute he goes and takes charge that means remembers who he is he is meant to roar not meant to meow everything comes in alignment so if you are frustrated go and blow out someone else's fire because you were meant to be saviors for others life givers and you'll realize in giving the life that you have your own fire is blown out by him we have a testimony for this someone messaged me yesterday day before because if you're not every time i'm i'm feeling a little low or anything like that i actually go and give life because their thoughts telling me i am it's not who i am i am spirit and i am life thoughts tell you so you go out so someone messaged me and said priya i did what you said you said to give life and she's got like concerns about a family and who's going to tell him about the lord and she wants her children probably to taste the goodness of the lord to taste the goodness of the father so now she forgets about her children her husband her family and she gets on the intercessory we have an intercessory prayer list those who are not doing anything they have a lot of time you like walking put your names there that means every monday you get a list of 10 people and you just have to every day in that week whenever you're going walking whatever just lift up those 10 people don't worry if they don't have a surname god knows who they are and you lift them all up you look at those and just pray in tongues for them if you're here someone is praying for you even if you're on our list on the oneness group someone is praying for you 24/7 every day there's somebody praying for you 
So we did this, so she started praying for someone else. Two days later, or the next day, she gets a testimony that her kids got selected in some tournament where in UAE, they only select three teams to go to the country, three teams. But they made an exception this time, or they changed the law, and her team had come fifth. And they decided that five teams will go. And imagine, now she gets selected, and her daughter, or her, she was so happy because now she's tasted the goodness that only Jesus could do this. Because mom is talking about Jesus, and who did this? Jesus did this. And so she was so happy, and she's like, I understand what you mean. That I went to refresh somebody else, and he refreshed me. Meaning I went, and I'm praying for others, and here my own life is getting fixed. The very thing that she wants. You're understanding what I'm saying. Is what happened with her actually? She came into alignment because she was always meant to be a life giver. And so even as she starts giving what she has, and what was what she has? She's praying in tongues. Everyone sitting here prays in tongues. Pray in tongues for somebody else. And you'll realize that somebody else, God is raising up maybe to pray for you and fix your own things. Okay? So, um, so this year is about counsel, taking that about the insignificant, the dead branches, that some of you need to be shown what those dead branches are. Dead branches means things, look at your life, that are like patterns that have been going on that do not produce fruit. Things that you do, habits that you have, that just at the end, they don't produce fruit. So why are you even doing them? And it's about chopping them out. And what happens if you chop it out? There's going to be a new plant. That means something new in that is going to get established that is going to produce fruit. Some of you, the word came consistency. That means just come and hear the word. Why? Because if you receive your manna every day, you are not going to be hungry. Every day, the word that you come and receive, it's like water cleansing you. How, how many know that Jesus says you are cleansed by the word? That means your soul is getting cleansed. You go out on a Sunday, you hang out with Adam people, you forget your son. That's why we have Wednesday, so you come back, you remember again, oh, everything about my life is different. So why do we have it twice a week? So that you remember awareness. Now imagine if you missed it, and then suddenly you come, you feel, I'm feeling dry. You're not dry, you're still the son of God, you're still a new creation Christ. Thoughts told you, your soul has gone into the old. And that's why keeping your soul man in the new. I'm going to talk a bit about that, okay? Someone asked me questions, so I'm going to address that. Uh, so I'm going to take some okay let's take on someone asked me a question about what does it mean to work out your own salvation work out your own salvation once saved is forever saved the minute you received Jesus in your heart you got saved you are the righteousness of God in Christ you are right with God so what does the work out your salvation mean? In every area, you are receiving what he has done. You are receiving the righteousness that he has paid for you. And you are working that out in the flesh. This is not about salvation. This is about, for some it could be a healing. So I knew by his stripes I am healed. But my body, when it had rheumatoid arthritis, it didn't look like it. So to explain this, what brought in death into the world? Everyone should know this. What brought in death? Who sinned? So we were sinners, why? Adam sinned. It's like hereditary. It came in the blood and then everyone became sinner, sinner, sinner. Everyone got diabetes, diabetes, diabetes. Everyone got cancer, 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 cancer. It's in the blood. Okay? But now, the umbilical got changed. Second Adam came. So now, you are a new creation in Christ. The old has gone, the new has come. So now, suppose God, Jesus had to come and give you life. How can life flow? What is the opposite, or, op opposite of a sinner? Righteous. So he had to make you righteous first. And through righteousness, life can come in. So now your spirit man is the righteous, knows righteous, I'm righteous in Christ seated. You know what part of you will not know? Your soul man, your thinking. 
That's why a lot of people can see death in their life because it's righteousness consciousness is not getting established here in your mind. That's why the Bible says renew your mind. To what? Righteousness consciousness. And through righteousness, life can come in. That is me working out my salvation. So now I'm falling sick, I'm falling sick. And why was I falling sick? Because that word was there in the Bible. I saw it, but I didn't really believe it. Meaning I was like double-minded about it. The day I chose, I told you believing is not a feeling. Believing is not an emotion. Believing is the truth. It's a decision. You believe something because it is the truth. Say, I believe it because it is the truth. When you really believe something, how do you get saved? You believe with your heart first. And then confession will come automatically on the mouth. And then you are saved. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. Not that you're a sinner. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. So I had to take, when Rumata Rathra, it is everything. See, I'm a new creation in Christ. New creation, sons of God, have new laws in their body. Not the law of death. They have the law of life, Romans 8. New order has come in. So now if life is in me, how can there be sickness? And so now everything wrestled with me. But see, the, the day I made a decision about it, I said, I'm going to believe this. And I will just die with it also, doesn't matter. But I will believe this because it is the truth. It was not based on whether I see. I believed it because it's a decision to believe that it is the truth. If I didn't believe it, it's a lie. And I told you, everything disappeared. What didn't happen? For a long time, in eight months or ten months that I had this thing in my body, it vanished. Because I believed unto righteousness and then I spoke unto salvation. It didn't really matter. Sometimes a lot of your conversations when I hear casual conversations, I know what your heart really believes. Because the casualness comes out because your heart is not established. Once the heart is established, there's no casualness in your words. Like, hey, why are you feeling so sick? What happened? And then you'll realize even you keep falling sick. So you can't fake it. You can't fake it. You can quote all scripture. But if there's no heart and mouth alignment, you're just quoting scripture. You'll realize you're quoting, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed. Priya, I believe the law of life. No, you don't. I heard how you went and spoke to somebody who, was, who didn't come to church and you just went and said, why were you sick? Food poisoning? You think Jesus will do that? Food poisoning. Oh, you, can't, you can't fake this. <laughs> if you really believe something, your mouth will speak. It's not what you believe about you. A son, sonship is not how you see yourself. It's also how you see a part of who is yourself. That means if I really believe it's not in my nature, and if someone comes and sits with symptoms, my job is to tell because they are my arm. They're a part of me. Hey, I know I can see the symptoms, let me pray. But do you know that it's not in your nature? And by the time you go home, everything is going to get disappeared. Because that is life now, you're building them up. Otherwise, it's just community. You come together, you do church, and then you talk all crap. This is not community, this is sons leading sons. SLS means sons leading sons. That means you come in a gathering, you have your problems, and it's your job to remind them who they are. I told you once Rishi was there. This was early times. Hebron was with me and maybe another son. And we go out and suddenly Rishi has some rash on his face. And the other's like, hey, what's that red thing? And I'm looking at them. I said, excuse me. And then now he's like, and this was just uh, uh, maybe a couple of months in. He was in the kingdom or a year later. And I was like, one second. I said, do you believe that it's not in your nature? So then how come you see that for somebody else? How are you seeing it? When Jesus sees death, what does he say? I am resurrection life only for me. I am resurrection and life. And then the very thing becomes who he is. He raises it up from the dead. He is the light of the world. So if someone is blind, what is he saying? I am the light of the world. And then going and edifying and removing the blindness and they're becoming who he is. So sons leading sons is what? So I'm like, you can't take that word for yourself by his stripes, I'm healed. And then when you look at somebody else, see them, 
in their body, in their flesh, and talk all crap. Because they are one body. You all are both Adams, second Adams. So it's like a lion facing another lion. You better go and tell the lion, hey, do you know that there's a law of life in you? And if you just relax and chill and don't worry about this, whatever symptoms are going on in your body, that this life, just take that truth, is going to repel all manner of sickness out of your body. Because that is who we are. Now you lifted that person up. And now you will see that even you don't keep falling sick. Because you take sonship not only for yourself, but it's also for the other. You are understanding what I'm saying. So it doesn't work. So you'll see if you're seeing others, then you yourself are struggling with sickness. It works with when you really believe something for you. And now you see them as your body. That's why we are one body. If I hurt, they are hurting. Or if you are hurting, I'm hurting. It is oneness. When I'm speaking, you are all speaking through me. When you are speaking somebody else, the whole body is speaking through you. We are one. So now it's not only how I see myself. It, you know, the word says, don't condemn because you'll condemn yourself. Condemn not. It's like, don't judge because you judge yourself. By the same token you're judging, you're bringing, is because we are one body. So way before I said, I don't believe that Jesus died. I don't believe that without holiness, you can't see God. Don't judge that on somebody else because you've already judged it on yourself. And then you'll have issues like, hey, I can't hear. Why do I feel I'm dry? I can't hear God the way you do. You already judged it. Holiness is a gift. Jesus made you righteous. Righteous means the state of righteousness is holiness. God kind. That's why sickness can't touch you. Sickness can't touch holiness. You're receiving what I'm saying. Okay? So, SLS is about building, edifying, about the seed that is in the sun. Every time you're coming here, wherever you are, we're looking for the seed that is already in you and putting increase to that seed. Now you're being a life giver. So any problems here, don't please go and give them carnal solutions. Speak to them, I like Bernadette's testimony. That it looked like such a worldly thing, the problem. But she goes with the seed that everything about my hands is blessed. To somebody who doesn't even know the Lord. And she, the heathen, saw that, wow, what she's saying is true. Just be true to your seed. Speak up who you are. You know, another uh, example. I'm using these because they're all part of the questions that you've sent me. Okay, so I might not read your question, but you all have sent me these. Um, I told you sonship is taken in small things. I'll give you an example. Is everyone awake? No one is falling asleep. I can see some eyes closing. <laughs> be awake. Okay, if it means stand up and sit down because this word will be the most important investment in your life. So don't allow lethargy to come in. Okay? Um, so I'll give you an example. I've taken the son's permission to use this example. So I'm taking an example. Don't allow people to fill your, your ears with something bad about somebody else. Don't allow that. Because when you allow that, you're actually allowing the devil to fill in your ears. And he can see, oh, I managed to fill in. I managed, how did the strife come in? He filled in Eve's ears way before she did anything, something incorrect. And now something even worse happens, right? He can see that. So um, now I'll show you the pattern, the pattern that happens. Because you have to take your sonship in the microcosm. How does cancer spread in the body? It first started with one cell. That one cell went and touched another cell. That cell went and touched another cell. If that one cell was taken down, there's no cancer in the body. That's how immunity is. That's how righteousness works in your body. Like people write to me, Priya, he was, he was praying for so many people and all, but he only died. That's such a carnal way of understanding how healing works. I'm sorry. And if you judged it, you need to check with your own heart. That's not how the gospel works. It works at every cell. They can use a muscle and a lot of people have ministries and you see health. But if they don't know they are the righteousness of God, because for your health, divine health works through righteousness, you'll have sickness in your body. You're working just on the base of, I lay hands and they get well. So it's working for others, but that person will struggle. But it's got to do in the micro you do it. Righteousness in small things, you pull down those thoughts and that's how you, you work that out. 
So you cannot judge on the outside. They said it. How many know it's God's will for everyone to get saved? The Bible says that everyone, it's God's heart that everyone should know him. But when you have a crusade meeting or somebody is having and they all come, is everyone getting saved? Is, is, was that God's heart? So truth remains the truth, whether the person has the fruit or not. That means if the person spoke on immortality and he himself died, that's okay, that was Paul. Paul was trying to attain immortality, he didn't, but it doesn't mean a generation that is coming that will not see because it says the last enemy to be put under your feet is physical death. That means there's a generation that just keeps living. You're seeing what I'm saying. So just because somebody is preaching on divine health and they fall sick, don't judge them. No, you made them a god if you did that. It's about the inside work of that and take that fruit and you go ahead and use that fruit. You're seeing what I'm saying. So I told you it's in the cell. So I, I'll give you an example. We were at the new place that we're going. I've taken this permission, so I'm saying this, so that you are edified, so that you can see. So, you know, the management is a bit sort of old school. We're trying to work with colors and they have issues with simple things like black color and all that, okay? They were like, how can you paint a pulpit black and keep the Bible on it? I was like, the, you know, I don't think Jesus has issues with black color. But anyways, so these are the, uh, just to give a background, this is the kind of people that we're dealing with. So we go there and so I've come on a Monday. We've been told Monday is free. Now we go there, suddenly we've been told, no, you can't because now they've decided to keep Monday closed. Now, now if I see something that has come to me and if it is wrong, should you make an issue about it? Please do. If you keep quiet and if they see that you kept quiet, that's how they take foothold. So I am there, so in front of this person and this person is a bit like, you know, can, I, I think they're like a little like me. So, so I kept, I'm standing there, so I said a little loudly and Franny is very gentle, okay? And I love her, I like that because the Bible says be of a gentle spirit. But she's becoming bold as a lion also. Because the Bible says that we love in spirit and in truth, not walk all over me. So now this person is there, so I said, one second, I said, Franny, were you told, and I'm not talking to the person, I said, Franny, were you told to come on Monday? I've come not on Sunday, not on Tuesday, on Monday. Monday has been said, I've left my work and I've come here. So this person goes and just gets irritated and locks the door, nothing is going to happen. And uh, he said, don't talk to me, you're very rude and all. I said, I'm not rude. She's saying, no, I like to talk to this girl. She's very sweet and gentle. I said, but I'm paying for everything, so you'll have to talk to me. And I said, I'm not being rude to you. I'm sorry, but I've left my work. I didn't come on the Sunday, I didn't come on the Tuesday, I came on the day that you said it's going to be open. So I am standing there and I am pissed. I have every right to be pissed. So I'm standing there, so this guy, so now Franny goes, he's, should I handle it? And now she does whatever, whatever. And now maybe, now, now see this, my heart is, someone can come and tell me, Priya, I like you. I don't like Geetu, I don't like the way she talks. You know, if I allow that, I've actually allowed the devil to come in. I said, I'm sorry, but she is one. And sometimes what we speak, it may sound different, but actually the body needs all of this. And I'll probably bring some correction in that conversation so that they know that they can't bring in strife. Because it's not about the person who told me, it's about putting the devil out. If you do that, tomorrow no strife will come even between your husband and wife. He, he, see, this is microcosm, you take it in the small. This is about the devil. So now he knows I can't even cause gossip in the house. You shut the door. It's like that. Like Peter spoke something amiss. And Jesus discerns it's not Peter. And he says, get behind me, Satan. And now Peter might get offended. But Jesus knows who he spoke to. And Peter, maturing now, that Jesus didn't speak to me. I'm obviously not Satan. He spoke to something that I said. Because your tongue can be used by Satan and you don't even know it. That's why I told you in Beloved, trust the eldership, leadership. We have put people out because they don't even know their tongue has been used by the devil. Up until they come to know, to save you, we have to make some decisions. Now on the outside, it looks like PP has taken harsh decisions. Listen, I'm saving your butt. Because you don't know how, I, we know how spiritual realm works. We know discernment. You have to trust discernment in small things. So I saw this happening. Now we want the door open. Now what happens to get the problem solved? Let's just go make temporary peace. Okay, doesn't matter. She didn't mean like that, whatever, whatever. 
Is this right? Allowing the years to be filled because now he can see I can I can speak into these guys about her and it's okay. So I waited there, it's not okay. I made a big scene. I said maybe before I was pissed for the wrong, but today it was righteous. I said, I'm not sorry. I said all the work stops. We got the measurements and all. I said, but no work will happen till I don't have this matter. He has a boss. I said, I want to speak to the boss. I'm going to go first time to the boss. No work, it stops right there. Everything has to be stand still. Because he needs to know, he can't. So Frenny later on went and explained him what it meant, it was told to her. But I had to take Frenny aside and I said, don't allow even for to get the work done. Don't allow it. It's okay if the work is not done. But don't allow somebody else to fill in years against your leadership. You need to tell him that you honor me. And that no, whatever it is, she is the reason why I'm in the kingdom. And we're doing it all. Because it's not about him. It's about putting the devil out. Now, now I, I'll tell you why. Now, this happened. So, I was, see, sometimes you don't see these things. That's why you need the body to make someone see something that you don't see. This is insignificant. It's so insignificant. But someone didn't see it. It's like, just get the job done. Na? So, we got the door opened. He let us do it, but it was a principle. I said, it was wrong. If he got the door open by saying, yeah, you talk to me. She's like that. That's wrong. You cannot do that. Because tomorrow, for bigger things, he'll start doing that. He'll walk all over you. So now Frenny is in a train a week later. So we are going on a walk and Frenny tells me, Priya, you know, there was this TC. I now she goes to the TC station. She buys a ticket. The guy tells her, buy a 60 rupees ticket. She wants an AC train ticket. It's 70 bucks. Whose mistake is it? They give her a 60 and say, no, you can go in the AC. Who's wrong? The guy is wrong. She takes the 60. She goes and sits in the AC train. The TC collector comes and says, Excuse me, you have to get off at the station. Or you have to pay the fine of 270 bucks. So Frenny is telling me, you know, she got angry and all. I said, okay, you, so you got angry. I said, so I'm thinking now she's not paid. I said, so what happened at the end of the whole conversation and barrage of your fight? She's saying, I paid him. I said, why you paid him? To solve the matter, maybe. So I said, someone took from you something that is wrong. He was wrong. Now later I'm talking to Frenny. We were talking about things. And, you know, something, because we want to see righteousness come in every area of your life. There are some court cases that her family is stuck in. I said, what is the situation? She's saying they've taken something that is ours. Can you see the pattern? Can you see it? But why did it start? It started in the small. The big court case will get freed. If you don't allow here, I'm sorry, you can't fill my ears with crap. You chopped it off. So now when you're in the TC and the TC comes, you come and say, I'm sorry. Like the TC was saying, I'll take you to police. I will take you to police because your people don't know. They're selling me wrong things. Yeah, let's go open up this matter. I am not paying my 270 bucks because this is, this is called righteous judgment. And when you go and do it, other people, you're, because probably they're doing it like this, send people with the 60s because 270 they're collecting every day. How much money they'll collect like this? It can be a whole scheme. And it's just going on because the sun never spoke. So now it's come to your light. So you expose it. And you bring orders, not for yourself, but for everybody else. The court case will also go. Because you've learned to open your mouth. So as a son, you lead, not in love. In righteousness and love. That's why we guard oneness in the small. We took the cancer cell down. That tried to keep creeping. That's how even immunity comes in your body. You want divine health, righteous life. That's how it starts. So when you get that little cold, cold didn't come in without a thought saying you have a cold. The thought came first, you might have a cold. You take the thought down. Then your voice, it, big is going in your nose and all of this. No, but it's not in my nature. 100 people tell you have a cold, it's water coming out of my nose. You don't let the seed, the truth be pulled out of you. You still stand on it in the small. So in the big things come down. How did David become king? He first takes the, the bear, the lion. Then he takes the Goliath. So you take first the, don't fill my ears. Then TC, like, yeah, let's go to the cops. It's not about 270. It's the wrong. It's you give righteous judgment. I've done this even in hotels. I go menu card. 
they give me some crap. Doesn't even look like the photo. Yeah, I call. And then a lot of times they say, what are you doing? And I say, no, go, go call the chef. Because you have intermediaries representing and speaking on behalf of the head. When the head is probably for you. And then the chef comes and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I want to do. But I take it in the small. In the small. Now I understand a place of giving mercy. The Lord will lead you. But this is when you see something is wrong and you allow it. That's why, what, an, what is an accomplice in crime? And he gets the same punishment as the person who did the crime. It's like someone you saw, someone is gathering and doing something for that person. You know, in court cases or like a murder or anything that is planned. And an accomplice is the one who hang around, hang around it, was hanging around. That person saw everything and did nothing. You are as guilty as the person who did it. That's why the Bible says, he who breaks one commandment, thou shall not lust. You've also, it says, don't sleep, you've broken all. <laughs> It works like that. You are seeing. Stay with the body. So when you really believe, then you will speak. And you know when you will notice it in the casualness. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So abusing is not the MF or whatever they were saying. F-U-C-K. Fornication under the consent of the king. If you look it up, that's what it means. Abusing is the intentions of your heart. One can say, fuck word, and they're not really abused. But one can say, really mean that you like die, or something bad happened. It's the intention of your heart. And that is cursing. Because the disciples saw it. When Jesus went, he was not with the words. He just desired that the, of you, no one will eat any fruit. And then they say, oh, the tree that you cursed is withered away. So it's not outside. So the world judges outside. Oh, this person is cursing and they have, and one person has all clean speech. No F, no bad words. I'm not saying use bad words. I'm just saying it's a wrong way of discerning the heart of somebody, whether one, one is for you or against you. Sometimes it's all beautiful words, but the heart is against you. That's why in all things we discern from inside out. I do not discern by outside. And actually I'm learning to not discern by outside. Even as I'm leading a lot of things here, putting flattery out, people lift you up, but they can also put you down. So putting out and really discerning where we want to be. Sometimes not allowing busyness, even in ministry, it looks like, you know, like we don't do much with orphans and everything and people question. I said, I'm sorry, but it comes as distraction because our purpose is to have the word of sonship multiplied. Because the word says to the poor, give the good news. So when this is multiplied, righteousness makes you rich, long-term fix. So hand the Sancha books out to the poor people. Put the 100 rupee note in if you want to give, but give the Hindi Sancha book out. So the word will bear fruit, okay? Uh, you're receiving what I'm saying? So you know what work out your salvation means, okay? Uh, I'm just trying to see all that you've told me. Marriage, I want to see marriage. Marriage is supposed to be with purpose, okay, uh, with vision. If you see it in the Garden of Eden, how God made marriage, it was always with vision. When God is doing something with two, it's always with vision. Like even if he was sending the disciples out, go in twos, go to that place. It is with vision for a purpose. You were made with a purpose, for purpose within the kingdom. That means once you received Christ, you are part of his body. When you get up in the morning, if you want coffee, is the only hand going to the coffee? Or is all of you going to get, grab the coffee? So you're supposed to be doing something in the body. And when you are not doing what you are supposed to do, things are getting delayed. That's why everyone I encourage, especially when you are married, marriage is supposed to be with vision, with purpose. If there is no vision, there's no purpose, you'll feel there are two people coming together, sitting together, living together, everything is fine. But something is missing because you were meant to build together. Not a house, but build something within the kingdom together. So I've encouraged all marriage couples, if you're there, we are all busy, they are all busy. 
we have things that we want to do also but commit yourself to something and in beloved we are not like you know very grounded like you have to come on sunday no we want to do so that you multiply so that you can take your vacations you can take things but everyone is doing is doing their job unto the lord and you'll see when you're all about him he is all about you because it was meant to be with vision and purpose you're receiving it's so good i a lot of people don't want to commit because it's just so i can do what i want i'm not tied down it's a dead branch you'll realize a lot of things in your life also people are not committing to you or they're not serious about what you're saying also because in the very things that you can be serious you're not it works in cell level you start being serious about something that is so insignificant but i want to do it you'll see everywhere else you spoke the words and now people are very serious about you my words are casual and they are yes and no my words are spirit and they are life father says jesus says there's no yes and no i am a yes and an amen let your yes be yes no be no everything else double mindedness is from the evil one you just make a decision about something you know it's so hard for us to be here because or everyone who is in beloved by the way they have jobs we are not full time ministry people i believe the end time church is a working hands feet we are doing we are in the world we are making money we are business people we are sons that's the end time generation everyone they choose to lay down their lives and come and you realize when you are doing that like heenal he took care of the boss's heart for her maybe someone else they lost it but she didn't lose it she kept her job because she came and honored him you're so fathered and the father wants you to speak things okay let me give you another example of cell level or microcosm when i talk about the body you know i was reading an amazing testimony of this punjabi lady she came to the lord through her maid and so she believed about uh, you know her maid would come and talk about tell about jesus and she thought acha ye convert karte hain and all of that and uh, she got married and i think her business like her husband someone cheated him and she went through a little loss and so she was doing all the coconuts and she was doing the whole religion thing what we do and a maid came and said you know i i want to show you the true living god come to my church so she was like no if i come to your church you all make all these you are converting christians and all of that okay outside understanding and so one day this maid comes with a lump size i'll put that testimony up lump size tumor on her wrist like a lime size so she and this person is a doctor this person who now who is now in the lord she's a doctor so she knew she told, so this maid came and said give me medicine so she being a doctor she knew that this is not going to go with medicine you have to operate this so she said doesn't matter yeshu theek karega jesus will take care of it so she actually made fun and said you better not take this lightly because get it checked and all of that she says a week later the maid comes and the lump is disappeared so this challenged her faith and she went to her church this lady her her mistress the boss of the house so she goes to the the church and there she doesn't understand it's even a tamil church but she just kept hearing the word and she realized that she met the one who made her and she came into a living kingdom and her life began to change her husband saw the change in her and the whole family got changed the mother in law got changed everything and now it's been a 20 year journey and this testimony came to me because they hear beloved sermons about identity and she says one thing i always did priya i never shut my mouth i always spoke the truth if you shut your mouth things don't get better they just get covered and they stay the same if you want salvations jesus is speaking nothing happened for her up until she didn't open her mouth when you open your mouth have no fear of loss you stand up for the truth because truth always wins is because you don't stand up for the truth you are defeated and especially in household when someone is not saved now we are not giving condemnation you are sinner and all the sorry that's the synagogue with a cross this is new wine that you are the righteousness of god there's a heavenly father who loves you and you speak the truth they get ruffled up that's okay if they get ruffled up because their words are not spread on their life your words are spread on their life and they will do what they were sent out to do and so this lady she just kept speaking she just kept speaking and 
all those words popped up at different times in different individuals in a household, including a mother-in-law, father-in-law. The mother-in-law was healed of cancer. And everything, the whole household got saved. I know people for temporary fixing. Are, I don't want to speak because kitsch kitsch hota hai. They ruffle up. And I don't want my mom, I know somebody. Because I've been counselling that person for years and I said, you don't speak up. So why? Because are, they do kitsch kitsch. They talk about Jesus. I said, it doesn't matter. But if you allow the kitsch kitsch right now, it will lead to still waters later on. It looks like a storm. But you have to open your mouth, speak the truth, because the foundation is not with one hammer. You make many cracks. That means many truths that a whole concrete slab cracks and falls. Because so much of truth is there in that seed. And I know this person did not do that. The person, the, the, one of the parents went to be with the Lord. And then the person got into a relationship with somebody. Same thing. The guy is walking all over her. It's because the person has not taken dominion where dominion was given. So now even you don't have the boldness to speak to this person that you like, out of fear. Can you see the pattern continues and you're just victim. You are more than a conqueror in Christ. When you speak, you are not alone. All of kingdom will back you up when you stand for the truth. But in your households, whenever you see anything, stand up and speak the truth of what the word is. And trust and know that the Father will honor and bear witness with what you've spoken. I've seen that many times in my life. And I want you to and encourage you, if you want your surroundings to change, your households to change, you know, take the correction and the counsel that is coming from here. Sometimes it's the same thing that people have said, but it's almost like a dull thing, like you've heard it, heard it, but you're not taking it. It's the Father speaking and step on it. And the minute you step on it, you'll see then you can see the other thing also. It's because you don't step on it. And one counsel for everybody, whether you're PhD or not PhD, in the Bible, hear the word. Come here and hear the word. And why I say not on Zoom? Because sometimes the word is not coming from my mouth. It can come from the one you're sitting next to. And you can get charged up. And you're feeling low. I told you we're all cells. Born again, sun cells. Resurrection life in each one. You could be sitting and you'll get healed. Peter's shadow... Or Paul's shadow healed. Shadow, that means he went and sat somewhere, someone sat next to him in a church service. And they went out healed. Someone drops a handkerchief on you, you get healed. You become familiar with Jesus. So then you don't value the coming. But there is a fruit in the physical coming. Because things change in the body. Take that one counsel that I have for you. Okay? I just have one question. You know, when you all see demonic things, uh, someone brought a very uh, nice truth. You can't lose your healing. You know, when you think like you got healed and then the, you, you got healed and then that sickness came back? That's a lie. The same thing didn't come back. Once healed, stays healed. Maybe something else comes because you don't know how to take, but not the same thing that you were set free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So don't believe this lie. That it comes. Like my sister was saying, oh, that lump disappeared. Now, now that lump has come. I said, no, I have to tell her, not the same lump that went, even if it's in the same place. No. You have the law of life, and that life is killing everything in your body. Not the same lump. So don't make them believe that they lost it. No. Once healed, is forever healed. Okay? If you have questions, just send them. I'm just trying to read all that you've sent me. Uh, it becomes difficult to proclaim son's word teaching to my friends, brethren from the church I belong to for fear that if many join me, the others will say I am weaning people away from the church. Please advise. I have weaned thousand people from their churches. Please hear all my messages. They're all about weaning people out of synagogues with a cross. Every person in the Bible was called to minister unto him, not unto man. One of the reasons I can, I, the day I made peace that not everyone's going to like me, I was very okay with that. I had to make peace with that because I want to be a leader that is effective, not have everyone like me and there's no fruit. No, I could be the leader that I am. The Bible, Jesus, is very clear. Paul brought in correction to Peter also when he started hanging out only with Jews. And he brought the correction front of all. 
Now, Paul could have been like, hey, Peter may not like me now. I'm sorry, but his heart was for him. And if he's doing it for him, and Peter really trusts him, Peter will honor him more. Because Peter will also see more fruit from his life by the correction that Paul got. So when you see the disorder, that's why I took Frenny's exam, I asked her, but it will bear fruit to all. Can I take that? Not knowing that it's about me. When I have something, somebody else corrects me. I receive that correction about it through counsel. Even I, everything that I share here, I, I am accountable to somebody. I share everything. I tell them before I even bring correction to you. I, I double check it. I say, hey, I see this. This looks something. Can we, can I, can I correct? Do you, do you see it? Is, is, is I'm seeing it correctly? You're understanding what I'm saying. Okay? Uh, I'll give you another example. I, I'll take that example. Once, you know, we've defined the worship practice to happen at Rishi's house. Why Rishi's house? If you go to Rishi's house, the outside hall has one chair, sofa, and there are only stools. Because when he moved into that house, he knew that worship will happen there. So there was a place for the drums. There was a place for... Everything was aligned, and it's meant to be here. Now see what happens is... Uh, so one day, maybe not everybody came, and I understand if uh, Hebron is working at a particular place or, uh, you know, it's becoming late and it's easier, this main person is not there, let's have it at somebody else's house, the practice, because only two people are coming. So this now, now this is, it looks so insignificant, like maybe no one can pick it up. It's insignificant, because at the end of the day, worship happened. No. The plan A remains plan A. Jesus said, disciples go, in the room on top, the supper is prepared. Now go and eat from the supper because everything has been prepared in that place. That means probably that place didn't even have distractions around. Not an animal, not anything. The Only the, up, the, the community table was there with things. Maybe it was not even a pretty place, not too decorative. Maybe it was very simple. Everything was prepared for something very serious. Now, what if the disciples went, follow the guy on the pot, because Jesus said, follow the guy on the pot, and then he'll take you to that place, and say that, is this the room prepared for my masters? Right? You'll read your Bibles, no? All this is in the Bible. Now, if you go, and the disciples found somebody else, and said, hey, even I have a table, let's go here. Distraction came in. The word of the Lord came there. It sounds like the word, it's not the word. You took something else that was not for you. Now, if you don't catch it in the small, then bigger things, when the Lord is speaking, sounds like the Lord, you can miss it. And you're going and doing something else that sounded, but it's plan B, is not plan A. You catch it in the bane. So now, now this looks, so it came in a casual conversation. I said, hey, how did that happen? And no, so it was, okay, proximity. So I took it and I was like, am I making a big deal about it? No, no, it's not. So I took it to to somebody else also. I said, hey, I, I saw this, but this is not about him and all. This is about, just, uh, like, just uh, the path is like this, and now suddenly it's just coming a little deviated. And he said, no, you're very right. Because that place is framed, and there's anointing on that, and there's something there that is meant so that when they come there, there's seriousness. And if you do here, there might be casualness. Are you seeing? But now, if you don't take it here, then tomorrow in your workplace, Something is set for you or the father has. And because you've just allowed that, you're, you're going and a little deviated from maybe the position also you were supposed to do. You take it in the cell. And sometimes I told you, like there are insignificant things that you don't see. But maybe God raises up because he loves you so much for other people to see it for you. That's why you need the body. I bring everything to the light. I always encourage everybody. If you have struggles, addictions, everything, it's all paid on the cross. That's why I stand in my righteousness. What I am outside is also what I'm here. There is no two. Because I have nothing to boast. Because anyway, I don't stand in my righteousness. I stand in his. If someone else is standing in their righteousness, yeah, they'll worry. If I've lost my cool here, yeah, I've lost my cool there. Right? Because we stand in his righteousness. But keep things in the light. Because when you keep things in the light, what you don't see, God will raise other people to see for you. Because he loves you so much. So insignificant. Sometimes it looks, and I just bring it up. I just talk about it. I notice this, I notice that. Uh, you know, and I bring that up is because you catch it. You catch it, and then you go and you pull the weeds out. And you'll realize when you do it, a big thing 
got fixed. Or maybe next week you see suddenly the boss gave you promotion. And you're like, how did that happen? It was meant with that. I told you, it's at the cell level. So when you get the cold, address. Now it doesn't matter if the cold didn't go, but the fact that you stood your ground with that cold, that's what the spiritual realm sees. Man, you stood your ground, you stood your ground. That's what sonship is every day. Address the situations only for that day. You all have problems. Till we are in this world, we are all going to have problems. But you can be a defeated son or a victorious son. You can be like Abraham or like Lot. They both are righteous. One is so de defeated. Hebron will share next week about Abraham and Lot. And one is, is victorious because of their relationship with Christ, because by walking by faith. So the difference between two sons, counsel came. One took the counsel, did something. One got rebellious. And the Bible says, don't be like children when the counsel comes. No one likes it. But allow the pruning so that it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness in Hebrew. But the other child, they get rebellious. And a root of bitterness comes. <gasps> she said this to me. Yeah. It's not about you. Don't allow the root of bitterness and you're stagnated. You didn't bear fruit. Take Allow people, one of the things it's going to be, just come. Just come. Now see, this is so insignificant, right? But the Lord is so good that in conversations it came out. But see, when you didn't see it, he made it come up. So that maybe there's a promotion in line for him for something. Now that is aligned. Because it, it stays. This is, this is sanctified. This is sanctified. You are understanding. Sometimes a lot of things that we are speaking, but the person is not hearing. It's coming out different. There are many things that I've heard. Like literally the person says, Are, I spoke this to you. Are, but I didn't hear it only. Like genuinely I didn't hear it. So then who is in between? Who is in between? The hearing because your intention is right. You said everything. But how come I heard this? Someone was saying, and I want to take this. Please take this. Someone was saying, if I have a children child through a donor, is that Ishmael? I said, that was not what the word was. Please, children are all from the Lord. You cannot tell a child born even out of, uh, you know, illegitimacy or what do you call that? Yeah, that no, all children belong to the Lord. They're a gift from God, however they came. So your child is an Isaac. But see, I spoke about Ishmael and Isaac and the word went like, hey, if I do the donor thing and if I, if I have like a thing, this is an Ishmael, I said, no. I said, I'm sorry, that's an Isaac from the Lord because you're stepping out on the word. If you go and adopt someone's child, how beautiful you're bringing them at home. Doesn't matter where the child came from. All children are loved by God and they belong to God. So you can't now see I'm speaking it and how it can come out. And I had to bump into these people at a cafe and this thing came out and I was like, wow, I'm so happy I met you because this correction had to come out that you misunderstood the word. So I can be saying something and you can be hearing it through your soul. That means through your own understanding of how you see the Lord. That's why we have different speakers. That's why I keep coming and hearing the word. Because I truly believe when the Father speaks, even if you heard it wrong, He brings it out some other way through His word. If you keep coming and hearing. Yes? I'm just going to take one last question. Someone talked about loving, you know, people love and people don't love outside. Uh, differently, uh, believers believe, but outside they are rude and all. If you see me outside, I can be rude. Uh, you know, uh, hear the message, I, I tell you, hear the message on loving in spirit and in truth. When you see Jesus, he is, he made a whip. And then he went to the synagogue, temple, and then he pulled things out. Because he loves in, we don't love in this. Because when Lazarus, everyone was crying, he got angry. And then he put everybody, told them to get out. His love looked very rude. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. Oh, you're pissed off? Sorry, go. He looked very rude. But he was loving in spirit and in truth. And the false love that you see outside. Oh, you're not having a good day, the headache. And, and people want that. I'm sorry you would not get that in Beloved. Because I meant to show you the seed and to water that seed in you. So this is not about, oh, don't take the medicine. No, take the medicine, but please know there's a law in you. And that law is going to give all of this out. And yeah, the father is leading you to have that medicine. Yeah, yeah you still remind them where they are, that seed. And then you do not this 
go and do this. We don't do that. So now our church sometimes can perceive cold. But we have fruit. Fruit of things disappearing out of the body. Because the Bible says we worship in spirit and truth. Worship means kiss. That means you're called to love each other in spirit. That means your identity, the I am, the new creation. And in truth. Truth. What is the truth even about the other person? The identity, the I am. So you love each other in spirit. So if they are acting funny, that's okay. It's the flesh. I want to know what's here. And that's how you see each other. So if someone didn't say hi in church, don't get pissed. You go say hi. The word says, he who has no friends is one who is unfriendly himself. I've never had a problem with people not saying hi to me. Because I never waited for them to come and say hi to me. I went and said hi to them. If you think no one is talking to you, it's because you don't talk. And people come to you, you don't want to talk. It is said, the word says that. If you are a life giver, you will be filled with people in your life. It's because you're not a life giver. You're somewhere else. Say I'm a life giving spirit. Okay? I think I've addressed all your questions. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else. Anyone else has anything to say? Huh? You messaged me. Huh? The Bible says certain things we are delivered Oh. Delivered off or set free only by fasting. Huh? If Is fasting essential or is it the work of the flesh? No. Uh, I know that this, this thing has come where Jesus says that this thing can only go the unbelief by prayer and fasting. Everything I have, I have a teaching on fasting in Beloved. Go to the YouTube channel and hear on fasting. You really fast for yourself. You really fast to subdue your flesh. Fasting is not trying to twist God's arm to get something done from Him. No, you receive all things in your life because you are the righteousness of God and Christ. And it's actually through the word. I've, I've seen people who don't have the word. They are the ones who struggle. I'd rather sit with somebody and just give them word and pull out the weeds. That means all the lies are going out. The word is coming in now. That one word, forget scripture, so much scripture, scripture. Just take one simple word. And when you really believe that word, Believe it. Believing is a decision. Yeah, choose. I'm just taking this now. This is mine. You'll see everything comes out of that. So fasting, you can fast. I encourage some people to fast. It's good. Because when you fast from things, it's like, you know, a donut is passing. Now you know you're fasting. You can't have it. It helps the impulsiveness of the flesh to calm down. So tomorrow, mother-in-law says something off. You don't want to say, give back. You've tamed yourself to calm down in front of the donut. So tomorrow, even that, you are not letting it off. That's what it does in the micro. So especially when people get saved and they come here, especially we put them on fast, start fasting. Or intermittent, it's just subduing the flesh down. So you become more sensitive, okay? Uh, go hear the teaching on fasting. But it's not about, whenever I feel I'm getting too many thoughts, like just crazy and I'm just having a crazy day sometimes, you know, I choose to fast. And I pray in tongues. Because I, it's, I'm doing it for me. For my soul to come into rest, for me to really see who I am and not go by the thoughts. Another thing on thoughts, thoughts come to everybody. If you don't want those bad thoughts, one day we'll all be together, out of this world, in a new place where there's no devil, where you don't even need faith because everything what you see is what it is. If you want, you're living in this world, it says thoughts come and it says they're not your thoughts. So pull them down. I've learned either the thoughts come and what do I do? So many thoughts come. Well, pull them down. Take another thought. And I've learned it. I either cry about it or I do something about it because he said, pull down thoughts, cast down vain imaginations and bring them to the obedience of Christ in you. That means nothing to fear. This is a lie. And I choose. And the more you start doing it, sons, you'll realize it gets easier and easier. It's training. It's a school. Beloved is a school. Our entire life as a son is a school. Out of Adam, the soul of Adam, the mind of Adam, into the mind of Christ. So the mind of Adam is filled with death. Just death thinking. And now mind of son is filled with life. 
and we are bringing in his words and so that's why jesus says right let my wine my words come into you and then you will ask anything and it shall be done it's almost like a flow so what are you bringing bringing all the junk out the weeds out and replacing it with his words in you and those words are flowing out of you and bearing life that's how you can bear fruit so pull down the thoughts if you've never done it before start doing it any thought that tells you god is not with you you feel separated you know you feel dry today i'm feeling so like blah i'm just feeling so disconnected there are just thoughts telling you you are disconnected thoughts telling you you are dry thoughts telling you you need to be filled you the truth is you're seated at the right hand of christ in christ and that truth doesn't change and from that truth now start speaking to yourself and saying no that's a lie i'm actually have the holy spirit in me start speaking in tongues i'm full of jesus in me any thoughts of separation are only thoughts you're one with him and he is one with you and if you're here sitting here you're not alone the father the son the holy spirit and all of the kingdom is with you so we're going to stand in the word okay next week you're going to have more let's all stand up we'll give a tithe someone said me what does the father want me to do as a son be a life giving spirit find someone to water there's so much watering you need around you sometimes i i have one i have to give people to other people and then i wonder how these people don't have any problems you know they are worried about rapture when will rapture happen okay okay let's take a tithe just say now a tithe is just the way you tithe your money you take a 10 and you give it to jesus your high priest and then he multiplies it and nothing is lost the same way we are giving a spiritual tithe the spiritual tithe is a thanksgiving of all the increase of all the life of all the understanding that came to your ears and by faith you're just thanking it you're giving it to jesus and you're saying thank you for everything that i heard thank you for that one truth you brought to my ears today i was set free just close your eyes and just thank him for it and that seed is going to multiply and nothing that he spoken to you today is going to be lost okay so just say father i'm a son in your kingdom jesus you are my high priest and right now i give you a tithe a thanksgiving of all the increase of all the life of all the counsel of all the truth that has come to my soul and just worship him with it just thank him bring about all the truths that came to you right now sheri ara ra baba khara hada ri ara ra baba hulo ro ro ko kiriya ra ra baba haste ri ara ra baba shiriya thank you jesus thank you for the life thank you for the counsel i thank you that your word is truth that what you speak who you are and what you do is one what we speak what we do and who we are is one we are born of the word of god born of the seed your incorruptible seed i thank you that we walk in truth that wherever we go it's you going whatever we touch it's you touching i thank you that we are seated at your right hand we are seated at your right hand we are in this world but not of this world because we are forever with you and we conduct all things from the place of being at your right hand even in this world lay hands on the person next to you come on we're just going to speak life over them if there's anyone sick in body right now i just speak jesus your blood has set them free oh rahadari ara ra baba shiri ara ra katul or or ba ya right now we are one in body and holy spirit right now from inside you're giving life to this flesh to this body repelling every man- manner of infection every manner of disease every manner of disorder you are in us to bring in order even in our physical body right now just speak there is order in my body sheri ara ra ba ba khuro ho do ro no ba ba hala hara da ra ra ba thank you jesus for the law of life thank you your resurrection life in me is giving life to this body i thank you that i live and i get my life because you live in me not from the things outside but from what is inside that you are living in me and because of that i have my life in my body and in my surroundings sheri ara ra ka tu lo ro ro pa ba hari ara ra pa amen amen